and uh, you, you did really good there. Was that the point of that 30 second timeout was to notice to get you the ball? Oh, well, I think that was part of it, but then also I think they hit a couple of threes or maybe one three at that time. But uh, I mean, when the tallest guy is 6'6", six, six, you know, I, that's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Kobe, uh, this is your first game. You look very calm out there. You got eight points, zero turnovers. How did you feel uh, out there? Uh, I was nervous to begin with, obviously it's first game, but uh, I was really excited uh, to get to come out and kind of show who I was. A lot of people probably don't know who I am, so um, like you said, I tried to remain calm and, and listen to coach and just kind of lead the team. Kobe, uh, welcome to Division One basketball and Thank uh, you. welcome to West. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 19 and 8 tonight, four steals as well. You seem to be seeing very well all sides of the floor. You had a good uh, good stroke tonight, 8 of 12 from the field. Uh, what's the difference between your last high school game and this game? How do you feel? Um, it's a lot different. The pace is different. Um, a lot of people don't realize but the court is longer, and so it's, <laughs> you get a little winded. Um, but uh, I think I, I'm adjusting well. We had eight weeks over the summer, uh, six weeks in the fall, so um, I've adjusted and I'm feeling confident. It's 16 and four in high school, and now 19 and 18. I hopefully it's the same things to come. Thank you. This is a question for like all three of you. You all played very well offensively, all in double figures. But what chemistry are you guys beginning to grow? And I especially saw the chemistry on display when you, you and Ankrum both the time to that half court alley oop. So I suppose have not. What's it like getting the juices flowing and learning how to play with each other? Uh, I mean, we shot a couple of assists in practice, and we had to run for it. So uh, <laughs> we, we, we try to get one. But but no, I mean, we've been playing all summer, and uh, these are the guys that I go to war with every day. So we kind of been beating up on each other in practice. So it's kind of good out to get out there and uh, play with each other. Especially in the second half, it seemed like the first half of your offense was it was decent, but it wasn't really that well. The team was shooting really well. They were shooting over 50% from three pointers. What did coach say to like get your offense and also like come with the defense? You guys are playing great defense, but like they were still shooting really well. Um, we made a few adjustments. We picked up on, I think it was number 12 and number 20 who were um, hitting some tough shots. So we didn't help as much on the dribble drives. Uh, we tried to get closer to those guys when they were um, somewhat open. Uh, so like I said, we just made some adjustments, tried to close out a little harder and make them make some tougher shots. Kobe, you, uh, you come from success, two state championships in high school, mm -hmm. and then on your AAU team, you also won a championship there in Vegas. Yes. How are you breeding that success here at Western now as a freshman? Uh, just kind of trying to bring it in into Western, I guess, uh, trying to bring that confidence, a little bit of swagger, um, a mindset uh, in, into the program. Kareem Anthony Bello, in particular, had a fantastic first half, had 12 points. Mm -hmm. He had just so. five in the second. Did you guys uh, specifically key him during the second half, or uh, was it just the full court pressure, you guys think? Uh, I mean, we like I said, we made some adjustments. He we he was one of the ones uh, that we talked about at halftime. He uh, he he had some tough shots in the first half, so we wanted to make sure that um, we didn't let him get loose in the second half. Um, Dalen, I think, was guarding him for a majority of the second half. He a longer defender um, and made him made it tough for him offensively. You guys forced St. Mary's into 23 turnovers total. What was your guys' game plan and defensive wise? Uh, in movie feed, I mean, we we instill a pack line defense, so it's always help the help the helper and help the helper that helps. Say that, but um, <laughs> yeah, we just, we just try to help each other on defense, move our feet, and um, close out on the shooters and make sure we get the first rebound. Brandon, early in the first half, you went up to put a guy on a poster and a very <laughs> nasty one that would have been hanging in my in my dorm room. But you came, you, you came <laughs> down, pass, come back, and if you're walking to the free throw line and you appear to be favoring your ankle, is it okay? Yeah, yeah, ankle's fine. No, we straight. Yeah, no, we're good. We're good. We're, we're, we're good. You good? We're, we're you good? good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just there was a little cramping, but I the water, a couple of salt packets, we're fine. <laughs> you guys, um, you used the fast break to your advantage in this game. Is that something you focus on and something we can look forward to in the future? Definitely. Uh, Coach Wright has been talking about playing with a faster pace since the summer, and so um, like, we, we get a rebound, we want to push the pace, get a steal. Um, we think that works in our favor because we have some athletes, uh, good shooters, good wings that can run the floor. Uh, Kobe, you and Brandon were real effective in the pick and roll offense today. You had a lot of jump shots off that. Was that something you guys been working on at practice? Or? A lot of, a lot of, a lot of repetition on that kind of stuff. 
um, and not just with Brandon, but all the bigs um, coming off and looking to attack and just make the right decision when I get in the paint. All right, thank you for being here. Um, obviously, it was a, a good win for us. I think uh, the way our, our, our guys responded in the second half is is something that uh, we can take from and it's very encouraging moving forward. Um, you know, give them credit. They came in here and uh, they made some shots early. Uh, we did a good job contesting the shots, but we didn't make them feel our presence. And that's something we talked about at halftime. So um, it's a good test. Uh, obviously, um, it's only going to get tougher moving forward. And I think our guys are up for the challenge. Aaron Jones here. Um, like you were saying about how they were making shots early, they were shooting 55, 52% from three in the first half. How, as a coach, do you like tell your team like they were? You guys were contesting these three pointers. They were some of them were fade away three pointers in the corner. Like, how do you, as a coach, tell your team to keep going out there and just play great defense? Well, for the most part, we identify how they were scoring, and like you said, they were just making some tough shots. Um, most of them were contested. Uh, a few of them were fade away. Um, so the first thing I'm looking at is how are they scoring? Is it the action or is it just uh, they're making some tough shots and give them credit? Uh, they made some tough shots. It wasn't necessarily the action as much as it was great. I mean, great offensive possession. Michael Lyon here, coach. Uh, first half, not a lot of full court pressure. Some man to man, particularly with uh, Webster or Duff out uh, pushing up in the front. You decided to go full fledged full court press in the second half. Why did you decide in the second to go? <laughs> well, I thought that you know putting a little bit more pressure on them could you know disrupt their rhythm. Um, and ultimately wear them down. Uh, when you look at a team shooting like that, you definitely want to disrupt their rhythm and wear them down, and that was kind of the logic behind that. Can we see, could we look forward to seeing more of that full court pressure in the future this year? Sure, that's something that we've uh, experimented with over the summer with our uh, summer workouts and our fall workouts, definitely. And as long as we're staying out of foul trouble, showing our hands, moving our feet, we want to pick guys up full court. Question. No, I'm sorry, Coach. You made, a, you made a big difference there in the second half. You shot 85.2 percent and only missing four shots on total. What specific changes did you make to make those open opportunities? I think for the most part we had a size advantage, and we we look at areas where we might be able to attack them, no matter who the opponent is. And we felt we had the obvious height advantage down low with Brandon, and, and give our guys credit, and give him credit for finishing around the basket. And sometimes he, you know, had two or three guys around him. Uh, which is good for him, confidence booster for him moving forward because I'm sure he'll face a lot of double teams moving forward. But uh, the concept was play inside out, and our kids' credit, they did a really good job feeding the big fella. Running Rudy here. Uh, Kobe Webster, phenomenal debut. 8 for 12, 3 for 5 from the three-point arc, 8 assists, 0 turnovers, and 4 steals. Getting it done on all aspects of the floor. What do you think made the transition from him so much easier from high school to college? I think for the most part, he's uh, he comes from rich tradition in terms of uh, his high school. They've won a couple state championships. Um, he's played with a couple of All-Americans, high-profile players. He's played at a high level in AAU. So I think that background has helped him with the transition. So um, we saw that uh, early in the recruitment process. And uh, hopefully he can sustain this level of performance through March Madness. Yeah, were you were you surprised at all how well he played in this first game? Not really, because he has a, a really good feel for the game. Um, he has a good understanding of how we want to play and, and how the game should be played in the right way. And it's just a matter of putting him in spots where he can be successful, making the shot or making the right pass. And his credit, he did both tonight. Coach, can we expect to see a lot of the Kobe Webster Brandon the electric and roll like we saw tonight? Yeah, that's something that's in our our foundation, uh, whether it's those two isolated on the side, pick and roll. Um, but as far as the flow and continuity, we also have other guys who can come off. I think Dalen does a really good job coming off pick and roll because he's 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, he can shoot over a lot of other people. So, um, But definitely that's a pretty good one-two punch, and you know we definitely want to utilize that as much as possible. Could you have a... With the three graduating players that scored a bunch for you guys last year, you managed to seem to make up for that with new players with Kobe Webster, and then of course you had Gilbeck really perform tonight. I don't see an absence with those players graduating, but what have you done through this offseason to kind of get past losing those players and more focus on the future? I think it's a byproduct of our foundation in terms of offensive and defensive schemes and then player development. We definitely uh, 
coach and, and one through 13, and we have two walk-ons, and we coach them the same in, in the player development so that when guys graduate or you know someone gets injured, next man up concept, uh, we definitely want to prepare for that. Um, we do a lot of that in the summer and the fall in terms of uh, just developing guys so that when the time comes, they're confident and ready. Coach, um, through the first half, you guys are only shooting fifty four point three percent. Only. <laughs> well, compared right, compared right. to the opponent. Compared to the opponent, they were shooting fifty six. They're having a great night, and then you shoot eighty five point two in the second half. How do you guys like have a big jump like that? What do you say at halftime to get your boys going? Yeah, just remind them of the the goals and the expectations at both ends of the floor, and and we thought we had a pretty good advantage down low, and we wanted to stick with that concept. And give our kids credit, they did that. Um, I think uh, and then we started to make some shots outside. I think that Dalen got hot early, making two threes, and that really got him going. And, and uh, so it was a good, it was a good win, a good test for us. Uh, but I was just proud of our guys responding to the challenge and, and stepping it up and getting it done with the defense. Brandon Gilbeck's usage rate tonight was almost forty percent. He had the ball in his hands a lot. He finished a lot of possessions. Is it fair to say that going forward he might be the focal point of your offense, or was this simply out of a, uh, out of matchup necessity? Combination of both. I think he's you know they're all a focus. I think we you know our offense is built move the ball, share the ball, make the right basketball decision. But obviously we felt we had an uh, advantage tonight in that in the low post and uh, moving forward we still want to utilize him as well as much as we can because he's a really good passer. I uh, anticipate some double teams coming. Uh, and he does a good job passing out of the double team. So uh, he's a big target, and we want to make sure that he um, gets the ball and, and makes the right basketball decision when he gets it. Something I noticed from Brandon in particular to last year was last year he wasn't going up for as many dunks. He wasn't playing that kind of – I don't want to say he wasn't physical on offense, but just the sheer rim attack that he did tonight I didn't see last year. Is it is it a coaching staff thing? Are you guys letting him go? Is it a maturity kind of thing where he now feels more comfortable in his frame, more comfortable with the basketball? Yeah, I think it's definitely comfort. You know, we always want guys to go score. I don't think there's any coach in the country that will say don't go score or don't attack the rim. So we definitely have uh, worked with him on uh, attack first mentality. We have some drills we do with all of our bigs to attack the rim, attack the rim. I think it's more of a comfort thing. You know, he's comfortable. He's a junior now. He's played a lot of basketball, and and when you have an obvious size advantage, you want to do that early and often. Coach, uh, you said over the off season. Last two questions. Okay, you said over the off season how you wanted to get CJ Duff more involved on both ends. Today he only shot five shots. How do you get him more involved in the offense? I think CJ is a, a really good uh, player in the sense that he lets the game come to him. He doesn't really force a lot of shots, and uh, and he plays stellar defense. So uh, he's a kid that um, if it's the right shot for him or uh, to drive and kick it to a, a teammate, uh, that's kind of who he is right now. We, we definitely want him to be aggressive, um, all of them to be aggressive and just play the right way and, and take their shots. Coach, I got to meet uh, some of your players for the first time tonight, and it's safe to say they have a certain energy, uh, a very high energy. How do you play that to your advantage on the court? Well, for the most part, we, we want to be energy givers. That's something we talk about. Um, energy and passion for what you do, whether it's basketball, whether it's you know your Fortune 500 company or CEO, whatever. You want to have guys that are energy givers, and uh, that's something that we talk about. And, and when you have that, um, it helps you through a, a tough first half like we had.